And welcome back to the show. You're with us on centralcoastradio.com. And I'm joined with Dave, Kyle, and Lee all together once again. The the, the power team is all here. <laughs> and we're going to talk about, you know, one of the biggest trending movies at the moment, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, which is, of course, a sequel to the animated Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse that was a huge hit a couple of years ago. But um, yeah, let's let's have a bit of a talk about the film. Uh, Lee, do you want to have a start? What did you think of Across the Spider Verse? I liked it actually. Um, I have to be in the right frame of mind. I think sometimes to watch animation um, when there's been you know um, movies with um, I'll say real people because there's real voices obviously in animation, but. <laughs> Um, you know, when you've got the characters as real people um, and you're so invested in them, sometimes it's hard to um, put your head in the right space for animation. Um, however, I have to say that whilst watching this, I really um, forgot that it was animation at times. I just was so captured by the storyline and the um, the voice acting and, you know, how it was all put together. I thought the visuals were stunning. Um, the storyline was really good. Of course, it's a multiverse um, storyline um, with Spider-Man going throughout the multiverse, trying to save the world as usual. Um, there were some great save little many moments. Many worlds. Yeah. Many worlds, many worlds, yes. Um, there were some great little moments in there too, like look out for the spider cat or spider kitty. There's one of those yes, in there this yes. time. So <laughs> it was such a small little thing, but I was like, yeah, there's a cat now. So, um, yeah, I hope that there's going to be a pop made of that pop or something. Uh, <laughs> yes. a cute little, you know, cute little teddy made out of that. Um, that, that'll be the, that'll be the series, um, kind of Grogu where there's a, yes. a baby or a Grogu plush toy and model and whatever. Yes. The else they've made. That's what they'll do for this series. It's like, let's make Spider Kitty quick. They should. They should. Um, yeah. And I liked um, the acting with um, Spider-Man's parents as well. And um, I won't give away any of the storyline, but, um, you know, how that there's care for his parents um how there's always that awkwardness with spider-man and his parents not knowing who he is and all that kind of stuff that's still in there and it's really brought to life um in this animation so i would recommend people go and see this um it's good for most age groups i think what would you think yeah definitely yeah do you, do you have yeah. a uh uh out of stars out of five what, what would you give this one I think I am going to give it a three and a half out of five. Excellent. Yeah, I I think it's... Did you have any issue, actually, with um, it being a sequel? Did you feel like you had to have absolutely seen that first movie for this one to work for you? No, I actually think you can watch a standalone. Um, often I have, I'll be honest, often if I have not watched um a movie recently I don't retain a lot of that movie um you know when you've got your favorites you kind of know line by line you can say it back to front almost um yeah but with this one I had not gone back and watched um the first one prior to watching this again um and I was not lost in this movie at all I think that if you are familiar with Spider-Man and the multiverse, it will make sense. Yeah, excellent. Okay, Kyle, what, what did you think of Across the Spider-Verse? Um, I, I guess I'm a bit more of a downer. I really did enjoy uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. I was, I was very surprised by how, how much I enjoyed that film. And I know I, I felt just a little bit let down by this one um I, I think the main reason I, I i didn't care for it quite as much is because it this one it really feels like it's a a film that's been stretched so it could be a two-parter um i know we've seen a lot of other like two-parter films and even the last uh we'll say with recent superhero films um infinity war it it 
that really felt like its own film. Whereas this one, it really, it, it don't get me started on that. (laughs) (laughs) Well, at least for me, like it, it really feels like, um, like it, it ends on way more of a cliffhanger as far as, it, it just it feels like it's only really half a story um it does yeah. feel that way least. i agree yeah. with that yeah like absolutely I mean, it, yeah it, it's especially for it being so long like it's nearly two and a half hours and mm-hmm. like there's a lot of things happening and like there's a lot of references to the comics and there's a lot of fan service but at the same time there's not a whole lot happening as far as the plot is concerned there's not a lot of like, plot beats going on like it, it takes so long for even miles to to show up in his own movie because it, there's just so much time being dedicated to other things um like they make a lot of jokes in, in the story about uh the the villain i believe he's called the spot or yes yes yeah yeah like there's a lot of joke there's jokes in this about him being kind of like a villain of the week but like he kind he kind of is like he's to me he he's just like another multiverse villain who mm. he kind of disappears from most of the movies so they can set up a bunch of other stuff for the cliffhanger for the next film and the actual villain of this film of this movie is is absent for for so much of it and i don't know and, and this also might just be a, a, a me problem but i'm i'm very multiversed out already <laughs> and yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I know it's 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 hard because that's what a lot of these movies are all b- built around at the moment like that's basically what this entire arc of the mcu is built around but i'm just i'm getting a little tired of it like even even spider-man centric multiverses i'm a little i'm a little getting a little burnt out on it but I, I a little bit of the same mind just mm. because and it's because Marvel has burnt me out on mm. it because mm. I don't think Marvel have handled their multiverse well at all. They haven't maximized the potential of where they can go and how they can introduce yeah. other things. It's just kind of been a bit of a throwaway concept so far. I agree. But, um, yeah. I mean, the, the, the Spider-Verse for me has been a bit better, but um, I also agree with the issue that I, I wasn't expecting this to be half a story. I thought mm-hmm. I was getting a full story and yeah, it, it, it's a bit of a letdown to come two and a half hours in only for the story to not be resolved at all. <laughs> yeah. Or at least even just for it to be, for it to at least feel like it's the end of the, uh, of the chapter. But of chapter, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. it just it really does because uh, I know it's a to be continued, and, and there's other like you know, I just watched the, the Fast and Furious movie. I was okay with that ending with cliffhanger, but it at least felt like it, I don't know. It just felt a little bit more like it had it had told a story uh, of some sort. But mm-hmm. I mean, beyond that, the the visual style is is at times brilliant, but like at other times, I thought it was a little bit annoying. Um, I guess it was just it's primarily whenever we go to Gwen Stacy's world um, that that universe's particular uh, style that wacky off the off the wall art style is really ramped up to eleven where there's 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 times when every single time that the camera angle changes the background does as well and like I. I I got the hang of it. <laughs> I mean, I got the hang of it eventually, <laughs> but but particularly in the in the museum action scene at the start, it it's so yeah. it's done in such a way that like I have no idea whether they're inside or outside or whether they're alone or there's a crowd watching them. Like I, I know again, this is another me problem, but like it, it it reminded me a lot of um the style that that Frank Miller used for the uh, the Dark Knight Strikes Back comic, like not not the Dark Knight Returns, but strikes back in particular and i just hated yeah. that book because of it so i, I don't know like the, beyond that when it was good it was amazing the the visual style and there's so much again it's it, like the last one there's so much just hidden in the background of this movie and visually it's so stunning that like i can really see this winning the oscar for best animated film easily for for just the for the visuals alone um yeah, I think uh, other than that, like story-wise, I, I I would have liked 
I don't know. I get. I guess I would have liked some of the characters to not all sound the same. Like there's um there's a scene where like Peter Parker and Miles and Gwen and another Spider Man and the Spot and they're all swinging around. They all kind of sound like they're they're the same. They're re- they're reading off the same script. They all sound. They're, they're all <laughs> talking with the same quippy comedic dialogue. Like none of them feel like they have their own voice. Later on, when it gets to like the Spider Man twenty ninety nine and uh like it gets better later on but just just at those parts early on like that just that why that's why i'm just a little bit let down by this but i I guess i am interested to see how they follow it up with the next one um yeah i I guess yeah i just wish that they maybe uh told the told the um the first part a little bit more more like it felt like its own thing i guess yeah, I think um, if you think of the start of this movie, it almost seems like a Spider Gwen movie, mm. and then it turns into mm. Spider Man movie. Um, yeah, yeah. And I think um, you could almost have done a movie on each, um, but it's been put together, so it's super long. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting that I think they've they've kind of tried to give these characters interesting relationship dynamics that they're Mm. dealing with family and you know their spider career and their love life it's and that's been a big focus but then yeah the the opening of the movie does kind of make it like it is two different things because it's very much Spider Gwen, Spider Woman's movie. Yes. At the start, and then you hit the credits, and, and then, then it does no, a switch, it's and you're like, "Hang on, Spider Man yeah, like, movie." It's like so... <laughs> forty minutes into the movie, and you're introducing Miles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you're getting you're getting the relationship between them from two different views, mm, and mm. it's putting extra importance on Gwen Stacy this time. So it's like, okay, yes. we're going to follow her more in this film. This will be an interesting, mm, um, which I liked. I actually view. liked her story. With, yeah, mm. I, I agree, but it kind of it goes into this back and forth where it's like, yeah. oh, you forget her and you follow Miles, mm. and then it's like, oh, you forget Miles and follow someone else. It's, yeah, yeah. It, I think that could maybe be handled a little bit better, yeah. but um, like, it, it's still an entertaining. Like for me, it it's still like a three out of five for me. I just like I, I really, you know, I I hate to say, I really did enjoy the first one a lot more. Yeah, uh, I, I think I'm with you there just for the sake of a complete story. Mm. But um, all right, let's 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 cross over to David. What do you think about Across the Spider-Verse? I really, really like this one. <clears throat> I actually really like the fact that it did combine the two stories because I think if they just made this another Miles Morales story, in a way it would have felt too much like the first one. Whereas getting to see Gwen's world for a little bit and also getting to see what her family life is like, I think was actually very important for the film. I think um, one of the important aspects of this film is showing how they're both struggling with their secret identity and their family life. Um, Like Gwen's is pretty full on with what happens with her dad. Um, and it kind of makes you realize that what Miles is complaining about is not much. Um, Mm. But I just, I love the visual style of this. I love the fact that it feels like I'm watching a 1980s MTV hard rock, heavy metal um, video clip, like, and that they keep it up. Like so often in the past, there's been animated films out there that have tried to do things differently, but they've only done it for a few scenes or for a few panels whereas this manages to enough to fit in the trailer and that's it yeah Yeah. but this like (laughs) manages to hold it for the entire film and like i get what kyle said there because there's a couple of times when i don't like the artistic style of a certain world in this either but i kind of put up with it because i know that it's not going to be there for long like when it, it was, um, I, I was really happy when they went to Miles as well. Yeah. And, the, and it was a bit more standardized yep. animation. But yeah. I also find that, like, there's a, I called it in my written review, graffiti style. It's almost mm-hmm. like a graffiti style to this. And 
it works really well. Like I, that's, I think one of the reasons why I love that line when someone yelled out, is that a Banksy? Um, like <laughs> it, it, it fits with this, like this, if, if this had come out when I was a teenager, it would have like probably made me want to go out and do the artwork because it just um, talks to me that much. But I, I like the story as well. Like sometimes with an animated film, I have real problems trying to connect with the characters but i find with this that i feel exactly what they're what they're feeling um i can't believe how much i ended up hating one of the characters by the end of this but that's purely because you see what happens with that character and it's like you know as i was walking out of the cinema i was thinking i don't normally have that where i like i, I literally hate a character to the point where I was hoping they would die, but like at the end of the film. Um, so yeah, I think it, this film really, really worked for me. Um, um, Lee doesn't even know this yet, but I'm telling her now that I ordered the Brooklyn Nets, Miles Morales <laughs> singlet today that um, he was wearing throughout the entire um, film. But even that, I think grounds it like, and sadly, this is the last we ever heard of Dave. <laughs> Being a being a Brooklyn being a Brooklyn Nets fan, like even that grounds the film for me. Like seeing Miles wearing the Nets outfit and um and everything, it just it completely grounds the character and and makes him more kind of relatable. I do not know why he's wearing Bruce Brown's number. Um, Bruce Brown's not a big star of the Brooklyn Nets, but he must feel pretty good knowing that a superhero is wearing his um. Is but in he... Miles's universe, <laughs> yeah, I know. So, uh, but look, I really, really did love it. I thought that um, I was disappointed that it did have that kind of cliffhanger ending. I would have liked a bit of closure, but for the most mm. part, absolutely loved it and can't wait to see it again. And what's your uh, rating out of five? I'm actually giving it five out of five. I really, really loved it. So I think it's going to be one of my films of the year. That's interesting because I really wanted to give it five but i that cliffhanger ending was like well it's not more than four and i still struggle with with that <laughs> but um yeah you, you raise some interesting points like you know we've been talking about this sort of dual storyline and which again i i don't hate like i i like that we see things from Gwen's point of view it mixes it up a bit but I just don't think they've done it effectively because she kind of disappears and then it's miles of story and I do love the dynamic of miles the story and his family and how he's handling things I know it's kind of retreading steps that have been built in the previous movie but if you're new to it the opening kind of works because we're getting it retold and with different points of view but it, I do think it has been handled a little clunkily, especially in the early stages. Now, I, I'm crazy about these movies because of the art. And I have to say, though, this time around, it almost didn't stand out to me as much as it did in the first film. Hmm. And I don't know. Does anyone else feel I, I differently felt... about the art in this one? I know that the three directors of the original aren't the directors of this one so i know there was a bit of a changeover of the creative leads so yep. that might have had something to do with it i liked how in no, this not one that there's like a, a, yeah sorry i was gonna say i like how in this one um there's even individual art styles for different characters mm. like how mm. spider punk yes. is always like in the black and white no matter yeah. what scene he's in and they have that like I thought that was a very very brave choice so yeah I don't know if the artwork was as in your face as it was in the first film but I think it's certainly um I like that they made creative choices around certain characters yeah I like the difference yeah in it. it's mm -hmm. not as um not as standard I guess um and yeah just I like a bit of creativity something different yeah, it's it's interesting because, like you say, that they, they do have different styles around different characters, and even like the effects used with something that they do 
like a power they have or with technology from their world is different compared to, you know, what the other characters, um, you know, special effects or that world that they're in special effects look like. So I do like the choices used, but for some reason, I don't know, I went in there because of the artwork and I, I found myself halfway through the movie suddenly thinking, oh, it hasn't kind of jumped out at me like the first one did. The first one was an unexpected kind of spectacle. And maybe it's because I'm already used to it from the first one. Mm -hmm. Am I not um, seeing it with surprised eyes like I was the first time around? Mm -hmm. But we are given, you know, right from the start, we're given the, the, the difference of styles depending on what world you're from as well. You know, we got this kind of sketchy, uh, Leonardo da Vinci drawing villain in Gwen Stacy's world, which is high contrast, high color, um, you know, very of the now animated world. And it's an interesting dynamic. But uh, as I think Kyle said, there, there are some confusing moments in there with what's going on. <laughs> but, Just like um, how it's, how it's, it's still, yeah. Yeah. Just the way it's laid, some and they do um, cut shots very quickly. Suddenly you're inside, suddenly you're outside. Mm. Um, there was also that scene in the kind of uh, Mumbai Manhattan universe um, as they're sort of rescuing people from a falling building and such. There's you're, you're cutting scenes between different characters and their inside buildings and their outside buildings. Some of that gets a bit hard to follow as well just because it's so intense and fast paced um i don't know if it's a problem but it it can really keep you on your toes as to what's going on especially when there are different styles involved but again like i i loved some of the stuff they came up with it's actually brilliant there, there's a great little scene where you get the 60s spider-man from the cartoons um swinging in to try and stop Miles Morales from going on the run. And he's just this very two-dimensional thing that's getting closer. And then it's like, nope, I missed. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really interesting to see this paradigm of different styles. And again, yes, the spider kitty, that, that needs to be a huge <laughs> thing. That needs its own movie. That should be the star of part three. I, I actually think it should be. <laughs> Um, but yes, a lot of fan service in this one, as we've mentioned. Um, for those who are really into deep Spider-Man lore and who follow the comics, there'll be a lot of great little nods and things for you in this. I think you will absolutely love it for that. And yeah, look, I keep coming back to the incomplete story. I, I wasn't going in expecting a two-part movie, and that no. really annoyed me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I felt two uh, two and a half hours of my time and nothing came to a resolution. It was so frustrating. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, look, I, I love the relationship and character dynamics between the different characters, between Miles and his family. I mean, we get a bit of a resolution for Gwen and her father because, you know, that was an intense start to the movie. And they get some closure at the end, but I don't think it's enough for the whole storyline. So that kind of pulled me out of it a bit. I had an interesting conversation about it, actually, when I was at the cinema. Um, uh, someone who worked there was asking, do you think it was too intense for kids? And I thought, no, this one seemed even more to me um, child friendly than I even remember the first one being. But I think where it's kind of, it's set up things that should be kind of horrific and, you know, kind of scary, but it hasn't paid them off. And it feels like it's saving all of that for the part two. Yeah. And definitely. where we've, the, the cliffhanger we're left on, it feels like we're in a darker place as well. So does anyone else get that sort of vibe? Like, is the next one going to be a really different kind of mood? And is it going to be a different audience? 
Yeah, it felt like it was setting up for a, without going into spoiler territory, a, a torture scene, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, it did look a bit like that. I, I kind of, it's been on my mind for a couple of days, actually. And I thought, I bet it's just going to pay off where it's, it's not what you think. It's just going to be suddenly, oh no, we're all friends. <laughs> yeah. I, I hope it's not that cheesy, but um, yeah, look, to me, it it's that incomplete story, that lack of closure has kind of brought it down for me. Otherwise, it's it's a pretty fantastic and enjoyable film, but for two and a half hours of not a finished story, it feels like you've kind of watched half a Netflix series or something. Yeah. <laughs> so that kind of brought the the rating down for me. So. I'm going to give it three and a half because the characters, the performances, fantastic. The art, love it. It it could be, it could have been at least a four star, but yet you just didn't handle the story well. Mm. So yeah, from me, three and a half. From Lee, you were three and a half as well. Yeah. From yep. Kyle, three stars. Three. Yep. Three and three. David, you gave it five. You were, you were unashamedly spider fanning this one weren't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but look yeah. you know we, we've all had our opinions there don't just take our word for it i highly recommend people watch it i think it's great to see the cinema i'm all for bringing more of this animated and just looking at art in a new way i think i think that's what this series of films does it allows us to kind of look at art but not just in a in a static way that might be traditional if we're going to galleries where we're looking at it in in action in a sense so i don't know i i can't recommend enough of films doing this sort of thing so yeah i say i say take a look and yeah don't be afraid to take the kids it's very very kid friendly you don't have to have seen the first one um, I think you get a little extra just from what's being built up, but everything that is important to the storyline is mentioned within the movie, so you don't need to have seen the first one. So that's all we have to say on Across the Spider-Verse. And if you're not going to see for it, see it for yourself, well, shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, don't be... We do have a bit of a culture, especially in the West, of animation is for kids. Mm -hmm. I don't think this one is strictly like you can't enjoy it if you're not a child. I think we're moving away from that. But I did notice when I saw the movie, every trailer beforehand, except for the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, <laughs> was very much a child focused movie. So I'm not sure if it's being advertised the right way, but I did feel by the end of it, it was uh, pretty safe for kids to watch. And I guess yeah. if everyone's sort of watching the Marvel movies and things that everyone's got used to the idea of the multiverse, uh, even if um, Kyle hates it now. <laughs> <laughs> <I hate it. laughs> even if I'm burnt out on it. Yeah, yeah. I'm too old we right might now. all be soon, but but <laughs> hopefully they'll they'll get the conclusion to this storyline out before Kyle wants yeah. to um you know <laughs> go on a rampage. <laughs> but that was across the Spider Verse, according to the Subculture Team, and you're on CentralCoastRadio.com, and we'll be back right after this. <laughs> 